Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get more clients to pay you more money more often, then you definitely want to visit www.employeeescapeplan.com. That is Mr. Joe Nicasio's website, and he is one of the best business problem-solving experts. And my goodness gracious, is he good. So I highly recommend you go talk to Joe, have a conversation, see what new possibilities you can ignite within your business, and find out how you can create your dream job in business, in the career that you love. www.employeescapeplan.com. For the man of the hour, Mr. David Medansky. Divorce attorney wins the biggest case. Loses 50 pounds in four months. David Medansky in July of 2016 was told by his doctor he had a 95% risk for a heart attack. He lost 50 pounds during the next four months. Now he wants to help others reduce their risk of suffering. A catastrophic medical emergency by reducing weight for others to have more energy improved self-confidence and improved mental clarity david you ready to rock this yes i am chris awesome man awesome so we're now bringing you on to becoming your greatest possible self you are live david thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your schedule to dedicate to making a difference with people thank you thank you thank you thank you chris appreciate the opportunity to speak to people Absolutely, man. Just the beginning. So we're going to dive into your journey and your story and challenges that you've overcome to get to where you are today. Before that, let's dive into the theme of today, hustle and flow. So J David, like when you think of hustle, I, I think of grinding. I think of really working hard, you know, burning out, whatever it might be. When I think of flow, I think of manifestation. I think of creation. I think of ease and uh, effortlessness. So I'm curious, how do you relate to these two seemingly opposite paradigms of building, creating, driving, and the flow, detachment, and just letting things kind of manifest? How do you relate to those two? Well, when I think of the hustle, I think of people who don't take time to take care of themselves mm. and stop for fast foods and eat poorly and don't go with the flow of what they should be doing to take care of themselves. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So the hustle is the people who are out of time, always stressed, always anxious. And then the flow is just trusting that life's working out, having that positive mindset and really just being in the flow. Exactly. And here's one little uh, tip most people don't realize, but the number one reason people overeat is because of stress. Mm. And the number one reason people go on vacations is to get away from stress. And what do we do when we go on vacations? We eat and drink. And sometimes yep. we drink a lot of alcohol. Yep. Yep. Wow. So make sure that when you're going on vacation, don't just unleash and make choices that are not in your highest and best good. Relax, but relax in a healthy, self-care, nurturing way is what it sounds like, right? Exactly. And I like the way you use the word choice because that's what we all have. We all have choices that we make. And yeah. depending on those choices depends on how it affects our, our life and our lifestyle. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, David, I appreciate that perspective. Now let's start diving into your journey, your story, how you got to where you are today. What challenges did you have to overcome to be this uh, authority on weight reduction? And what personally have you experienced to get to where we are today? Well, before July of 2016, for eight years, I was on a roller coaster of losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. No matter what I did, I couldn't seem to keep it off. And finally, in July of 2016, my doctor told me, based on my lab results, I had a 95% risk for a heart attack. Now, normally, I don't mind being in the 95 percentile, but in this case, it was lethal diagnosis. He gave me two choices. He said, one, lose weight, or two, find a new doctor because he didn't want me dying on his shift. So with that sword hanging over my head, I chose to reduce weight. And during the next four months, I dropped 50 pounds. Wow. And I had to do it by modifying my eating habits and my lifestyle. Hmm. Wow. So what, what like, gave you the, the discipline to stick with it? I mean, what, 
what shifted in your mind? I know, yeah, there's like this imminent danger, like death, right? We got this this scare. Um, what what was it about hearing it from your doctor and that perspective that you think you received that most other people who know, you know, this probably isn't going to end up good for me well for me long term what were you present to that maybe you could help our audience get into perspective with so that we don't have to go through something similar some kind of catastrophic event or nearly catastrophic event or news to be able to to make that choice and that decision something just clicked inside me and i asked him i said well do you have a program to reduce weight and of course he did it was going on 550 calories a day for six weeks and taking um, HCG, which is a female hormone from pregnant women. And it tricks the body into burning fat instead of muscle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go on 550 calories a day without the HCG, it burns muscle and it's detrimental to your health. The other thing is his assistant that was administering the program, Sherry did not believe, number one, that I would show up, and number two, that I would follow through. So I wanted to prove her wrong. And in doing so, I stuck to the protocol. If they tell me to do something, I like to do what I say I'm going to do. Right. And so I did it. Wow, that's incredible. So what, what benefits, what results have you seen because of that commitment? Well, I have more energy now. And I don't need to take a nap in the afternoon like I used to. Mm -hmm. And I started doing a lot of research on weight reduction and proper nutrition and health. And I found some startling statistics that alarmed me about the uh, United States population. Mm -hmm. For instance, 71% of the U.S. adult population is overweight, of which 41% is clinically obese. Mm -hmm. And it's getting worse. 70% of the people hospitalized are there because of overweight or food-related issues. All of it is preventable, including type 2 diabetes. The other thing is that 43 million Americans start a diet but fail within the first three weeks. And at any given time, there are 115 million Americans on diets or weight loss. So with all that, why is it that people are failing where I succeeded? Because I don't want people to experience or go through what I did uh, to suffer the emotional trauma of learning that I was at risk for a heart attack. Mm. It's scary. Yeah. I want to be around for a long time to you know see my kids. So that's what motivated me. And then as I was doing more research, I found some experts said one thing, another expert said the opposite. So with all of the weight loss programs out there and all the books and nutrition, who or what do you believe to act on? So I started delving into what works and what doesn't work. And what I found is that what works for one person may not work for the other. So what works for me may not work for, for you, Chris, or you don't need it, but for other people, um, you know, their neighbors may have something that worked for them. Mm. Now, we all know that Jenny Craig works. We all know that Weight Watchers works. And we all know Nutrisystem works. It just doesn't work for you mm. or people, you know, who are using it. So you have to find the right program that is going to help. But the most important thing is you need to change the lifestyle and eating habits. One small tip I can give the listeners is drink pure water instead of sodas, colas, fruit juices, water, flavored water, carbonated drinks. For example, orange juice, everybody thinks it's healthy. Hmm. Did you realize it takes four medium-sized oranges to make an eight ounce glass of orange juice? And it's loaded with sugar. So it's not healthy. Exactly who would want to have four oranges at, eat it at one time. Mm. So when you think of things like that, um, and I started reading more of the nutritional labels and seeing what was in products, and I was horrified to see that things were mislabeled mm. and uh, misrepresented. So one of the worst things you can consume is high fructose corn syrup, and it's almost in everything. Mm. 
Another thing is with uh, potato chips and Pringles especially, Procter & Gamble came up with a product that was called Olestra. They changed the name to Olean. It's been banned in China, Canada, and the European Union, but it's still legal in the U.S. They use it as a cholesterol and fat um, substitute. Now, the problem with that is it's addicting. So when they say you can't eat just one, that's why. Mm. The other thing is it inhibits the absorption of vitamins and minerals. So even if you're taking supplements, your body's not able to absorb it. Mm. Another thing people aren't aware of is Starbucks and other specialty coffee shops when you get those foo-foo drinks, mm -hmm. as I like to call them. The average drink has between 35 and 71 grams of sugar. Most people only need 50 grams of sugar an entire day for their intake. Oh. And then we wonder why there's an obesity problem. Well, what happens when we get that much sugar, when we get overloaded with sugar? Well, that's what causes the type 2 diabetes because your body starts overproducing insulin and then it gets to be insulin resistant. And so that's one of the reasons for the increase in type 2 diabetes is because of all the sugar and carbohydrates and the fast foods. Um, people think it, it's expensive to eat healthy, but the average combo meal at a fast food restaurant is $6 to $8. You can prepare a healthy meal for a lot less than that. Yeah. Another myth is... Um, that you have to exercise a lot to reduce weight. That's a myth. Exercise helps, but you don't have to do a lot of it. In fact, people who overdo exercise tend to gain weight because then they eat more. Mm -hmm. So some exercise is good. When I was on the HCG, I wasn't allowed to exercise because on 550 calories, my body would go into starvation mode, so it would retain weight. Mm. The other thing is when you lose and reduce the weight, your body normally wants to fight like hell to keep the fat. It's just how we're built. So it's a constant battle. And that's why I try to tell people diets are temporary. Mm. It's done in a way where you're taught to avoid few food instead of looking at food as fuel for your body. Mm. And diets are temporary. So what I'm trying to teach people is how to change their lifestyle for continuing weight reduction and it's not just losing it but keeping it off because like myself during those first eight years being on a yo-yo roller coaster when i lost weight i would gain it and 90 percent of the people that reduce weight and lose it tend to regain it hmm. that's that's crazy man so how do people how does our audience really start taking steps forward today to really manage their weight, reduce their weight, live a healthier lifestyle? Well, in addition to drinking more pure water um, and eliminating all the other uh, sodas and, and colas, you can tend to eat slower. So I used to be a very fast eater. What I've learned to do is to eat slow, and I put my fork down between bites because if I'm holding the fork in my hand, I find out I'm using like a shovel to get into my mouth as quickly as possible. Mm. So by putting it down, it makes me enjoy my food more. Mm. Uh, another thing is turn off the TV or reduce the TV. I just read in the Harvard Health Letter that for every two hours of increased TV watching, you increase your risk for obesity by 25%. Mm. Another thing is that isn't well known as to eat off of a salad plate instead of a dinner plate because you need smaller portions. Another thing you can do is use a blue plate. And people say, well, why blue? Well, blue is an appetite suppressant because there's only two foods in nature that are blue, the blueberry and a grape from South America. Red and yellow, on the other hand, are appetite stimulants. That's why McDonald's, Burgers, Wendy King, Wendy's, uh, Burger King, uh, Carl's Jr., KFC, and other fast food places, Denny's, all mm. use red and yellow or a combination of the two in their marketing and advertising. Mm. 
So there's just some tips right there. Another thing you can do is uh, get enough sleep. What they found is if you're sleep deprived, the average person will tend to consume an extra 500 calories per day. Hmm. Wow. Now, if you want to reduce weight, to reduce one pound each week, you have to reduce your calories by 500 calories per day. Wow. Hmm. And I'm sure you're familiar with Darren Hardin, who wrote The Compound Effect. Amazing. Yes, Darren Hardy's amazing. So he gives the example of the three men that when they got out of college, one reduced his calorie intake by 125 calories and started walking. Another one increased his caloric intake by 125 calories, started watching TV and cooking more. And the third one didn't change anything. Mm -hmm. And after 10 months, there wasn't much change or notice. But after two years, the person who reduced his caloric intake lost 33 pounds. The person that increased his calories gained 33 pounds. Well, that's a difference of 66 pounds. Wow. So it's so, that, that compound effect, the choices, the small little adjustments make a huge difference. Exactly. So it's little things that add up over time. Mm. And again, it's little things that we can do. Instead of eating a whole pint of ice cream like I would do before in one sitting, mm -hmm. have a scoop. Um, I still indulge and I still enjoy. My wife and I will go to the Cheesecake Factory and I'll get a piece of that big chocolate cake. But instead of eating the entire piece at one sitting, it'll last me five or six nights because I just take a bite or two and then I'm satisfied. The other thing is when I go to restaurants, I don't ask for the bread. If I'm with friends, I ask them to keep the bread at their end of the table. If it's in front of me, before I used to go for five or six slices at a time because I love bread. Yep. But now I just choose not to, to indulge. Yeah. I was talking to a friend the other day um, who wants to reduce weight. And I said, okay, you need to give up the peanut butter. She says, but I love my Skippy. And I said, well, yeah, I love my ice cream, but I choose not to eat it. It's a mm. choice. Yeah. So little things like that. And we all have different things going on in our life. We all have stresses. Some of have kids we have to get off to school. Some of are dealing with financial issues. Some of us are dealing with work-related issues or uh, relationship issues. So if we can learn to slow down, as you said, go with the flow, mm -hmm. stop the hustle, and try to uh, reduce the stress, do other things other than reach for food for comfort. Mm. Because food is comforting. Uh, most people won't acknowledge it, but food is an addiction. It's addicting. And, yeah. you know, if I start eating an M&M, there is no way I'm going to stop. <laughs> so I just have to not start. It's yeah. you know, similar to being alcoholic, basically, not as severe, but it can be when you start being obese and overweight significantly. Yeah. Wow. Awesome, man. Awesome. So I, I hear all these great tips, and you know, I think we're wondering at this point, or at least I am, my audience may, may be, uh, what gets you excited about this, this mission? What do you out to create in the world what what impact are you um you know leaving and, and creating in the world what gets you excited what gets me excited is when someone comes up to me and says thank you because of your inspiration i hired somebody to cook for me mm. and so i'm reducing weight mm. i had another friend that lost 45 pounds because she went on the hcg through my doctor and she loves her new wardrobe and image and figure and how she feels. She has more confidence. She has more energy. And she tells everybody, it's hard work, but it's worth it. Mm. No one says it's going to be easy. If it was easy, we would all be thin. If it was easy and everything worked, we wouldn't have all these magazines that you see in the grocery store shelves promoting all the latest diets and exercises if you look at Barnes and Noble and Amazon, there are over 50,000 books right now available for nutrition, weight loss, diet, and fitness. Wow. I was blown away by the amount of information out there. Mm -hmm. And again, who or what do you believe? Because one expert says one thing, yep. another says just the opposite. 
And again, my feeling is not one size fits all. You have to find out what works for you and do it. And some people are opposed to eating red meat, others don't mind. Some are opposed to eating fish or don't like it, others don't mind. Some want to be vegetarians, some want to be vegans. Um, my oldest daughter was a vegan and she tells me that being vegan doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy because you can still eat potato chips and pretzels and you're still considered a vegan, yep. but that's not good for us. Mm -mm. But I, what makes me happy or motivated is preventing somebody who may be at risk for a heart attack or a stroke and avoiding that catastrophic medical emergency. Um, you always hear of the person on the news and it never happens to you until it happens to you. Mm. If I can inspire and motivate and change or improve one person's life, that's a win for me. Yeah. And that's what I'm out to do is to change one life at a time, one pound at a time. Mm. Wow. It's beautiful. So is there any kind of uh, legacy that you want to leave around this or a, a big milestone, big vision around transforming people's relationships with food, anything you are out to like create, even if it doesn't necessarily happen within your lifetime? Um, you know, what, what would you want to create for future generations, for your kids, for, you know, what, what do you want to create? Well, what I'm creating is I, my forthcoming book is discover your thinner self okay. and it deals with my weight loss journey and gives practical common sense advice to reducing weight in a healthy manner. Mm -hmm. So there's no recipes in there. There's no exercises. It's things that we all know, but don't do. Mm -hmm. So if it can motivate somebody, that would be great. The other thing is starting on January 31st, I have an online weight reduction course called create your thinner self. Mm -hmm. And that goes through changing a lifestyle. Now, even though it's only an eight week course, I give people a year to complete it because what they found is in neuro linguistic programming, it takes at least six weeks to change an old habit to a new habit mm. or a bad habit to a good habit. And what happens is that about that six week time frame, the old habit and new habits start conflicting with each other. Mm -hmm. And so either you're going to break through or you're going to revert back. And so I want to help people get past that and convert their daily habits into routines so that it becomes second nature so that when they walk in the grocery store, they walk by the ice cream aisle or, the, you know, the junk food aisle and just go and get healthy stuff. And they, they just drink the pure water. Um, I personally prefer distilled water, but there's arguments on both sides, whether it's healthy or unhealthy. Hmm. So I tell people, if you want to drink spring water instead, you do what's best for you and what you feel comfortable. Um, I will never tell somebody not to do something if they think it's best for them, unless I know for an unrefuted fact that it is a bad choice like yeah. adding additional sugar. Now, another thing people may not be aware of, stevia has been touted as the sugar substitute for sweetness. Mm -hmm. When I went to the grocery store to get stevia, when I read the label of what the ingredients were, I was blown away that there was no pure stevia. It was all blend. The ingredients were either fructose, dextrose, sucrose, and even sugar. Mm -hmm. Yet the label said stevia. I had to go to Sprouts, Whole Foods, or even Healthy Habit or other health food stores to get the pure stevia. Uh -huh. So I want the listeners to be aware and careful of what they're purchasing because there is a lot of mislabeling by the food industry out there because they're out for their bottom line to make a profit. They really don't care about our health. And a lot of the products, they've been increasing the amount of sugar in them. Really? Absolutely. If you look at labels from before and now, there's more sugar added. And they're all using high fructose corn syrup, which is the worst thing you can use. Mm. And they're changing what they're calling it to disguise it because they're aware people are looking for it. Wow. Nefarious. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a lot of information in a little bit? It's beautiful, man. We love it. We love it. So 
what else can we really step into a new a new paradigm, a new perspective, a new uh, place to stand from in regards to our health? How can we choose more empowering choices? How can we relate to these choices as already having made them, as already having won the mental battle of which do I choose? Well, one thing I would suggest is if you're reaching for the comfort food, the M&Ms or the chocolate candy bar, Snickers, Milky Way, Hershey's, whatever. I mean, I love those all. Believe me, I miss them. But I know they're not healthy for me. And I know if I start, I won't stop. But what I found helps is sometimes I'll go for a walk. Mm -hmm. If you can't go for a walk, if you're at work, maybe stand up, walk away from your desk. Or maybe call a friend and say, hey, I just need to talk to you. I'm stressed out. Just yeah. something other than food to comfort you. I mean, we watch TV. We watch the, the movies. We, we see what's the first person someone does when they're upset or stressed. They're sitting there eating the pint of ice cream. Mm. And that's what we all do in normal life. Yep. I'm no exception. Again, it comes down to conscientious choices. And rather than go gung-ho and do it all at once, do it gradually. Make small changes. Uh, again, the first step is just drink more pure water. Mm. I enjoy a good cup of black coffee. I, I don't put cream or sugar in there. Um, I drink green tea. I don't use sweetener. Some people like the sweetener. If you're going to do that, use the stevia. Um, raw honey is good for tea, mm. for a sweetener. If you like coffee, try cinnamon. It's a nice little natural sweetener plus cinnamon tends to raise your metabolism so you get the benefits there's little things people aren't aware of they can do to make uh substitute or different choices mm. uh, again um if my wife and i are traveling and we have to stop at a fast food place i'll get a hamburger but i'll say plain nothing on it and then i just eat the the meat and throw the bun away mm. now not everybody's going to do that um Again, I've learned to eat very slow when I was on my 550 calories a day. Um, I was allowed two Melba toast rounds. And you'd be surprised how slow I can eat a piece of Melba toast. <laughs> because <laughs> there was not a whole lot left of food on 550 calories a day. Yeah. So, you know, again, what's important to you? What's your reason? What's your motivation? Everybody has a different trigger point. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine in Indiana I asked him what his trigger point was, and he said type 2 diabetes was his fear. And he was borderline, and since I talked to him six months ago, he's dropped 40 pounds just by changing his eating habits a little bit. And again, um, I respected what he wanted to do. As he told me, he says, David, I didn't put the weight on overnight. I'm not going to lose it overnight. I'm going to do it my way. And I said, great. And I'm thrilled that he's reducing the weight in his way. Now, what I try to tell people with reducing weight, it's like eating an elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> exactly. So most of us gain our weight one pound at a time. Yep. So how are we going to lose it? One ounce and one pound at a time. And the thing is, be patient. Um, sometimes the body will hit a, a plateau, so you may lose 10, 15 pounds um, and then not lose any for a week or two. It's just your body adapting and normalizing. Think of it this way. If you lose a half a pound a week in a year, you'll lose 26 pounds. If you lose three pounds in a month, that's 36 pounds in a year. Mm. If I ask most people, if you'd like to lose or be 30 pounds lighter this time next year, they'd be ecstatic. Mm. It's just taking little changes and doing it gradually. I don't advocate what I did or encourage people to do what I did because I understand the discipline that has to go into it. And not everybody is in a position where they can do it. I was fortunate that my wife was very supportive. So when I ate um, my reduced calories, she would eat what I would, but just have a little bit more. Mm. Um, not everyone has a supportive spouse or a relationship that the other person is going to be supportive. They may have coworkers that will say, oh, have one piece of cook 
cookie or one piece of candy. It won't hurt you. No, it won't hurt you. It won't kill you, but it will prevent you from losing the weight. Yep. So you have to say thank you, but no thank you, and be tactful. During the holidays, what I learned between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day, the average person will gain five to seven pounds. And 90% of us will not lose those five to seven pounds. So year after year, we keep accumulating it Mm. and not reducing it. So if I can find a spark somewhere with someone that says, I need to prevent having a heart attack or, yeah, I need to reduce my weight and they get motivated to do something, I would be ecstatic. Um, The other thing is don't always go by the scale. Hmm. Go by your waistline. If your waistline is telling you your clothes are fitting better, that's great. Yeah. Um, Another misnomer out there is the body mass index or BMI. Mm -hmm. Adolf uh, Quitlet, who created the formula for it, never intended it to be an ideal weight measurement. It's just a ratio of height to weight. Wow. So a question I'm a lot I'm often asked is what's an ideal weight for me? There is no ideal weight for each person. In addition with the BMI, it doesn't take into consideration the difference between a couch potato and a pro athlete. Mm. So according to the BMI, I should be thirty pounds lighter. Mm. There's no way I could get thirty pounds lighter because it wouldn't be healthy for me. Now, Dr. Oz says a good indicator for good health and proper weight is your waistline should be one half of your height. So I'm five feet, eight inches. A healthy waistline for me is 34 inches or less. Mm -hmm. So if you're six feet tall, 72 inches, your waistline should be 36 inches or less. (laughs) And my waistline is less than 34. So Mm. I'm a happy camper. Awesome. But I, I hope you know some of this information may help people because I know they'll go to the, the health club or the gym, pay this expensive membership fee, and the first thing that people do is say what their BMI is. It's a myth. It's a fallacy. They don't need to go by that. And, and you don't need to go to an expensive gym to do an exercise. People are asking me all the time, what do I do? You know, What kind of workouts do I do? I say, I don't do much. I tell my mom, bless me with this body. I give her credit. But what I do is I do push-ups. And I started by doing, you know, one or two at a time, built up to five, then 10, then 15, then 20. But what I do is I'll do two or three sets throughout the day. Hmm. So now that I'm doing 40 push-ups at a time, if I do three times a day, that's 120 push-ups in a day. Yeah. And, And little things like that. And if you can't afford to go out and get dumbbells or weights, if you lift a jug, a gallon jug of water on each hand, it weighs 8.36 ounces. I weighed them, so that's how I know. But you can lift the jugs of water and do presses and curls with it. And that's something, it's a dollar for a jug of water to buy. Hmm. So little things like that. So there's ways you can get around it. Um, you can go for a walk, as I said, just do a brisk walk, but start slow. And the most important thing is before you do any weight reduction or exercise program, always, always consult a medical professional or health professional Hmm. Uh, because everybody has different medical situations and conditions. And I don't want to give any medical advice without someone going to see their own physician and finding out what's important. Now, as a caveat, (laughs) make sure that your physician seems to be in somewhat good health themselves. My doctor is. I met um, a doctor when I was in Costa Rica in September with my wife for our anniversary. He was at the beach with his wife, and and his name was Randy. And Randy was an interesting person because he was sitting smoking a cigar, and he looked like he was about 80 pounds overweight. And we were talking, and he said he had just lost 80 pounds because he had to have a pit replacement. And he told me that his colleague and friend, an orthopedic surgeon, would not do the surgery on him because there was too much fat. He couldn't get into the hip. So Randy lost the weight, got the hip replacement, and he started boasting that his average patient 
is three to 400 pounds. And when I told him what I did to reduce weight, because I was writing the book, he said, my doctor was a quack and didn't know what he was doing. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm looking at you and I'm looking at myself. There's a big difference. Mm. So again, doctors don't always take the time to find the underlying issues of why we're overeating, what's stressing us out. They don't have the time, mm. but that doesn't mean they can't give you proper guidance because mine did. Just be careful on who you're taking advice from. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Awesome. So are there any other health myths that you want to bust right now or anything that you think people are doing unknowingly that you can educate us on, enlighten us, share some wisdom, anything like that? Sure. One of the things is people think if they eat salads, they'll reduce weight. The problem with eating salads is a lot of people enjoy their salad dressings. The other thing is they forget about the bacon, the croutons, the mm. cheese. Yep. Um, the nuts, the raisins, everything else that they add on there all increases the sugar and calorie intake. For example, when we go to Cheesecake Factory, we look at the salad and they have the amount of calories mm -hmm. for a salad versus some of the main dishes. Some of the salads have more calories in them than the main dishes. Oh and people gosh. think by eating a salad, they're being healthy when they're not. So little things like this, when I have salad, I use a vinaigrette and oil dressing, so it's mm -hmm. low in calories. A lot of times I just eat it plain. Now, I don't advocate that for everybody. As my wife will say, I'm weird. I agree, I acknowledge it. But it's Committed. <laughs> yeah. It's a choice I make. And, and, you know, sometimes just using some fresh squeezed lemon mm -hmm. will enhance the flavor. Um, if I order a baked potato, I get it plain, no butter, no sour cream, and preferably no salt. Hmm. Not everybody's going to enjoy that. Right. I do. But again, it's choices. So look at what you can get. Uh, a lot of times I'll get the steamed broccoli or the green beans. When we go out, we don't seem to want to make those healthy choices. You, you can't. We all want the butter and, you know indulge ourselves. So salads is a big myth. Um, again, people thinking that it's expensive. A lot of times, you know, chicken is on sale or fish is on sale and you can buy it and freeze it and then just have four to six ounces and either grill it or bake it or broil it. Don't deep fry it. Don't, you know, put the breading on it. Um, when you go to restaurants, get the grilled fish or chicken. Mm. or get a steak. Um, when I eat a steak, it's plain. I know my wife, she likes her A1 sauce. Um, when we get shrimp, I like to get the raw shrimp, and I've learned to eat it without cocktail sauce. Wow. My mom thinks I'm crazy because she loves <laughs> cocktail sauce. But again, these are choices I'm making because I don't want to go back to how I felt and the pictures that I see of myself when I'm fat. I mean, mm. if people looked at my before picture of when I was 217 pounds in July of 2016. And what I look like now, they say, you don't even look like the same person. Mm. And I don't feel like the same person. Again, I have more energy. I am more mentally alert. I have more focus. I just feel better. And I feel I can help other people accomplish what they want to do with their life. If they're healthier and fit and not worried mm. um, and not facing as you said earlier, the catastrophic medical emergencies. The number one reason people are in the hospital for is for heart-related issues, mostly heart attack, stroke, or anything cardiac. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of it is preventable, especially type 2 diabetes. It's reversible and preventable. Wow. And there's a difference between type 1, type 1 diabetes and type 2. So people need to get educated and find out what is actually true and which is not true. Because again, there's a lot of misleading information. Some of it is not intentional. Some of it's done in good conscience, but a lot of it is intentionally misleading people because they all want to sell product. So if someone's telling you they have this miracle product, Ask what's in it for them. 
Mm. Because there is no magic pill. There is no lotion or potion you can rub on your body to get rid of fat. There's no genie in a bottle that will grant your magic wish, you know, to be healthy. Um, You have to do the work. As I tell people, I can't exercise for you. I can't chew the food and swallow it for you. I can't drink the pure water for you. And you can't pay anybody money to do that. This is something you have to do yourself. doesn't matter how much money you have. Um, So, yes, you can pay a trainer. Yes, you can pay a chef. But a lot of things we can do ourselves. A lot of us can't afford to pay a trainer or a chef. I know I can't. Mm -hmm. So I learned to figure out how to do things for inexpensive but yet healthy. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, David, we're beginning to wrap up the end of this interview, and we just want to know, our audience, what do you really want us taking away? What do you really want us taking action on? And how can we really live a a life where we reduce our weight, more healthy, more vibrant, more energized? Well, the main thing is they can do two things. The first thing is they can go to the website, uh, discoveryourthinnerself.com. Uh And they can opt in for a free report, and it gives 10 questions you should ask before enrolling in any weight reduction program and also common misconceptions about diet and losing weight. Okay, That's free. If they put their email in, they'll just get the report, and I promise they won't get another email from me unless they want me to. The other thing they can do if they want to pre-order my book on for $14.95 instead of the retail price of $17.95 and also sign it for them, they can go to beyondlosingweight.com. Mm. And the reason I use beyond losing weight is because once you lose the weight, then what do you do? If you've taken the time and discipline to reduce your weight, you want to keep it off. Mm. And I like using the term weight reduction instead of weight loss because when we lose something we want to tend to find it Hmm. and so i want people to reduce weight change their lifestyle improve their eating habits and have a healthy and and prosperous life beautiful awesome 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 david dude thank you so much for coming on here how do people stay connected with you you mentioned a couple ways that they can you know take the next step how do they stay connected i'll give my email And I'll get my cell phone because I have no qualms about people calling me. My cell phone number is 602-721-5218. Again, it's 602-721-5218. And they can send me an email at david at D, B as in boy, Medansky, my last name, M-E-D-A-N-S-K-Y. That's like three words, me, Dan, and Sky.com. <laughs> so it's David at DBMedansky.com. Beautiful. Awesome. David, you're the man. I'm so proud of you for losing the weight. Keep up the amazing work. We're excited to see what happens after the new year with this program launching. You know, Best of luck to everyone who gets involved. Everyone who's listening right now, definitely go visit his site. Find out if this is your solution, your breakthrough moment. And David, dude, keep up the great work, man. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate you having me on as a guest. Absolutely, man. We'll see you soon, okay? Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Medansky bringing the heat. And if you're just